everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to watch Dr. Stone Season 2, Episode 9, to see how accurate all the science and technology in this anime really are. What Senku is using right now is called a volumetric pipette and their purpose is to extract an exact amount of liquid from a solution. They come in various sizes depending on what's needed for the experiment or job that the chemist or engineer is you know, doing. And one thing to note is that if you want 50 milliliters of a liquid or whatever solution you're working with, don't use the 10 milliliter volumetric pipette five times. Because using a 10 milliliter five times is not the same as using a 50 milliliter once. And the reason for that is because you're less precise when you are introducing more uncertainty into your experiment. And whenever you use a pipette, it's a little bit of, you know, uncertainty in there because like I said, we're imperfect humans making imperfect measurements using imperfect tools. Nothing is perfect. So everything has a little bit of like wiggle room in there. With these pipettes, the more you use them to like extract the liquid and mix it with whatever you want, the little bit more uncertainty you're adding every single time. So to reduce the amount of uncertainty, just use the one pipette that you need for the exact measurement of solution that's required. Ah, <laughs> Just staring at that cup of nitric acid and poop is not gonna do any like magic, whatever they're expecting. If they really wanted to make this any sort of viable, like it's much better to actually mix it. And the reason is because right now that liquid is only interacting with the surface of the solid that's inside of that container. And if you want it to actually like, you know, get something going here the reason that you would mix it is because then the solid starts to like break off in little chunks and for you to you know complete the chemical reaction you want the reactants to be in contact as much as possible which is not what's happening here <laughs> That reminds me of just school and like I'm not talking about like engineering school just any science class in general like if you don't know the answer to a problem like for an exam it's you just throwing any and all equations that you can remember and just like hoping something works it's like whatever you can just conjure up in your mind like I, I've invented equations and I've like done all sorts of stuff when I don't know the answer to something or don't know how to solve it and what I found is the the problems where you know the least have the most amount of work because you're trying to get the highest amount of partial credit <laughs> Yeah, that, uh, that paper airplane is actually more destructive than the tank, believe it or not. Nitroglycerin is no joke, man. It will behave exactly like that, as Senku has just showed. It's a contact explosive, meaning that it has to meet with some opposing force before it goes boom. The examples I've seen are of people hitting it with a hammer in a controlled environment, and it doesn't take more than a few drops to actually get the result that you want, which is a giant explosion, right? But Senku drenched that paper airplane in nitroglycerin so yeah if it makes contact and it's like you know like enough of an impact I feel bad for that tree. Besides blowing things up nitroglycerin is also used for one other main purpose for chest pain. I don't know how the guy got that approved to this day like he must have been the best lawyer of all time to get that through because like who looks at something and says okay this liquid explodes at like a violent, enormous, like just, just everything is just dead, right, around it. 
let's drink it and see what happens. Like, who comes up with that? So this, so nitroglycerin is used for like when people ingest it, it actually like dilates your coronary arteries and it improves blood flow to your heart. But my question is, how did they find that out? Like, who was the experiment that they were like, hey, so we don't know how to save you, but drink the stuff that's in dynamite. Maybe that could work. There's a chemistry graduate that made an awesome video about this particular episode, and he talked about how nitroglycerin was properly made within that cave, and the, like the, the whole uh, like science and chemistry behind it, which I do not know that level of chemistry, but he clearly does. I should definitely recommend that you check out that video because it's super cool. And the one thing that he added, which I like, I didn't I didn't know about this, but nitroglycerin needs to be prepared in a cold environment, not a warm area like that cave. So it wouldn't have actually made the purity that Senku wanted and we might not get the large explosion but that could be why he added so much more of that liquid so that we actually get that giant like boom that we saw because just adding a few drops of it at, at the like, greatest purity that would probably achieve the same result as a lot of it at less of a purity. <laughs> That is super cool. The fact that Senku is finding these different uses for, well, I don't know if he found the different uses, but there are multiple uses for an explosive besides just killing people with it, and that is one of them. The guy who made dynamite, his name is Alfred Nobel, and yes, the, the Nobel Prize is actually named after him. He, I don't really know what the purpose behind it was. I'm not sure if that was like for warfare or for whatever reason he made dynamite. But that amount of money that he accumulated for that patent is actually a quarter of a billion dollars, which is what he's worth. I mean, he's obviously like his family is worth today. He passed away a long time ago. But from that point on, everyone who wins the Nobel Prize actually gets $1 million from that giant fund and a gold coin. Part of the emergence of the Nobel Prize was because Alfred Nobel actually was nicknamed the Angel of Death, and he didn't want his legacy to be killing people and murder. So instead, he decided to create this prize for any scientific or peace, like the Nobel Peace Prize, right? Or any sort of scientific achievement, and then that would attach his name to like peace and happiness and well-being and things like that, and away from the angel of death, dynamite, death, destruction, and all that stuff. I did not see this whole like sister situation happening. I don't even understand how Senku knew about it. That like how he connected those dots is, is beyond me but I don't know where they're even gonna go with this. Like, it's like they introduced a whole new storyline in the middle of a war. But, I mean, props to Senku, yeah, like, no one died. Okio didn't even die, I thought he was, like, done for, but he's still standing and he's got this dynamite arrow that can kill anybody. I wonder if this is gonna actually work, because if somebody had a disease before they were petrified, when they wake up, do they still have that same disease? That's, a, that's an interesting question, I wonder. If, and also, I just realized, while he was digging it up, Skasa actually hit his sister in the head with a shovel. I mean, she was stoned, so it's probably not going to feel it. But I I'm just I'm curious, like, when she wakes up, how is that even going to be? Like, she was in a coma before, so when she wakes up, is she still going to be in a coma? I, I don't know. This is going to be interesting, and I can't wait to see what happens next. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you want to see more Dr. Stone, it is on the way. If you want to see any other movie, TV show, or anime, let me know in the comments and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay fresh and stay golden.